All right, mates. How's it going? It is chapter 18 of Rise of the Horde by Christy Golden. I have now killed the bosses in the arena of Maldraxxus about 96 times, and I still don't have that goddamn mount. But anyway, let's go! I don't understand. Drek'thar had bought one of the youngest of the Frostwolf Warlocks, called Goon, to Juratan because the boy had some questions. What is wrong with hoping the elements will one day work with us again? And why can I not go to Oshagoon? The Juratan didn't really have any answers to those questions. Gul'dan had recently made a declaration. No one must ever practice the shamanic arts again. Or else. The order had seemingly come out of nowhere, and Juratan himself wondered why Gul'dan had given it, in this time of crisis and need. And because Juratan had no answers for the boy, he grew kinda angry. In order to triumph over the Draenei, our war chief has made certain allies. These allies have given us the warlock powers you control. Don't lie, kid. I know you're pleased with the results. At first, the boy said nothing, and Juritan frowned as he noticed the state of the kid's skin. Maybe it was the heat, the harsh climate for the past two years, but the boy's flesh was dry and flaky. Goon then absently scratched at a patch of rough skin, revealing a new layer beneath it, which was green, and Juritan nearly shit himself. He had no idea what it meant, but it was weird, and he instinctively hated it. And the boy, completely oblivious to all of this, then finally answered his chieftain. I'm pleased with the efficiency, but not with how it's efficient. It feels wrong. Killing is killing, I suppose. The elements used to give me powers that made my foes just as dead, but I never felt this way about their powers. We're in this war because the ancestors told us we needed to kill the Draenei. So why is Gul'dan now saying we can't go talk to them? Something inside Juritan then snapped. He grabbed the young warlock's shirt and brought their face to within an inch of his own. It doesn't matter. I will do what is best for the Frostwolves. And now that means doing what Gul'dan and Black Ant tell us to do. You will obey this new order. Goon stared up at him with disbelief. Duritan's fury immediately turned to sorrow. I won't be able to protect you if you don't. <sighs> I understand, my chieftain. I will not bring dishonor upon the Frostwolf clan. The young warlock then stepped back, bowed, and departed leaving Juritan alone and conflicted. A single youth was not going to change the way things were unfolding. Not even a single chieftain could do that. The next target of the Horde was a sacred site. Fresh on the heels of the proclamation banning shamanism was the order to march on a place the Draenei called the Temple of Karabor. Although it lay within Shadow Moon Valley, the ancestral lands of Nazul's clan, no orc had ever seen it before. It was a sacred place, and as such, the orcs had always avoided it out of respect. But not anymore. Now, Blackhand stood before his assembled army and ranted against the so-called spirituality of the Draenei. The cities we've taken so far were mere practice. One day soon, their capital will be destroyed. But before we shatter their most important city, we will shatter them as a people. We will storm this site, smash their statues, slaughter their spiritual leaders. They will lose heart, and then claiming Shatrath will be as easy as killing a blind wolf pup. Juritan stood armed alongside all the other warriors, glanced over to Orgrim. As always, his friend was at Blackhand's side. He'd become a master at keeping his face impassive, but Juritan, once again, saw through it. They both knew what this meant. This was Velen's home. They may very well slay him this day, if he's in there. It was hard enough killing Rastalan. Juritan would have prayed right there and then that he would not be the one forced to kill Velen too, but there was no one to pray to anymore. Six hours later, Juritan stood atop the stairs to the great seat of the temple, and he was almost choking on the smells in the air. The now familiar reek of Draenei blood, piss, poo, and fear. And then, it got too much for him and the Frostwolf Chieftain threw up. And as he wiped his mouth afterwards, harsh laughter greeted his ears. That's the spirit. That's all they deserve. I'll vomit and spit. Yeah, I'll vomit and spit. Mame kicked the corpse of a nearby priest and spat on it and Juritan tried to turn away in disgust, but there was nowhere to turn. Everywhere he looked, he could see orcs defiling corpses, looting them, pissing on them, etc. Is this what they've become? Murderers? Thieves? People who pissed on corpses? They have taken the temple, but they have not found me my prize. Velen must have known somehow. He is called Prophet, after all. Yes, you are right. If he were easy and stupid prey, I would have found him a long time ago. At that, Gul'dan began to breathe again. It was always a little bit frightening when Kil'jaeden was in one of his moods. With their temple taken for our purposes, Great One, 
Surely those that remain have all fled to the city. They will be there. He will be there, thinking himself safe, but he's trapped now. Indeed. The temple shall be yours, Gul'dan. Blackhand is already happily ensconced within the citadel. But before you order your little puppets to attack Shatrath, I have another little gift for them. It's all watched, Gul'dan, beneath half-closed eyelids, as the asshole wrote letter after letter. They must have been important letters. Normally, Gul'dan would have had somebody else do all of this work. The Shadow Council had relocated to the temple. The bodies had been removed, dark, ominous decorations had been put up, and the entire structure had been renamed the Black Temple. Now it played host to liars and traitors, and Nazul definitely included himself in that description. Eventually, Gul'dan finished writing, put his pen down and looked at his former master with thinly veiled disgust. Address them and take them to the couriers. Quickly. Nazul nodded his head. He wasn't going to bow. Not for shit. And Gul'dan, who either hadn't noticed the slight or just wasn't bothered by it, walked off. But Nazul, now alone, took this opportunity to read the letters Gul'dan had been writing. There was nothing contained within that Nazul did not already know, but that didn't stop the words from sickening him. He felt utterly impotent. Powerless. Or at least he did, right up until he noticed the unused pieces of parchment, inkwell and pen right there on the table. Kil'jaeden had taken Nazul's power away from him, but not his will. So, with trembling fingers, he took another piece of parchment and scribbled a brief message. Back to Juritan, who was getting increasingly fed up with the constant orders to march. They never got to just sit down anymore. It was just battle, repair armor, eat shit quality meat, and then back to battle again. So when this latest courier rode up, Juritan just kind of sighed and snatched the missive off them. But this particular missive was some next level bullshit. And Juritan was visibly sweating and trembling by the time he finished reading it. So he immediately hurried to Draka, who was the only person in the world he dared share this kind of information with. Who else knows of this? Only you. Will you tell Orgrim? No. I dare not. He's oath bound to tell Blackhand. Maybe Blackhand already knows about this. I have no idea who knows what. I only know that I must protect my people, and I will do so. Draka then looked at Joratan long and hard. If we as an entire clan do not do this thing, we will attract attention. You risk punishment, maybe even exile or death. Any one of those things is better than what will happen if we obey. I will not give my clan over to this. Draka's eyes then filled with tears, and she grabbed Joratan's arm. That is why I became your mate. I'm so proud of you. And we're leaving it there! It's kind of weird to think that there's four chapters left and they're just now getting to the point where the orcs drink Manoroth juice. And they haven't even mentioned the Dark Portal yet. But like I said in the last video, we'll do The Last Guardian next, which kind of overlaps a little bit with this story, in terms of the timeline and stuff. Link in the description if you're interested in buying the book, as well as for my Discord and my Patreon too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!